Today, John Keim got the chance to speak to Ron Rivera. Um, Ron has been out of work now for a little bit over a week, um, and apparently he'd like to get back to it. Uh, He says that he is open to being a defensive coordinator again. He really enjoyed coaching late in the season. Uh, And I I think, you know, we can get into his future maybe later in the show. I know Linnell wants to talk about some of this stuff as well. Uh, at 5 o'clock in our overreaction, quote-unquote, Tuesday here on this Wednesday. But I think Rivera's comments are largely, in terms of when he's looking back, largely accurate and reflect completely why he no longer has the job. And what I mean by that is I think he does a pretty good job of diagnosing a number of problems with the way things went this season, which is ultimately why he got fired. But the fact that he's only able to look back and see them with the clarity that he does now is exactly why he got fired. It's not really that hard to see a lot of stuff in hindsight. It's about having foresight. It's about the ability to adapt and change quickly. Like, anybody can watch, anybody that that is coached in the NFL should be able to watch tape and go, oh, I see where we lost. I see why that play went poorly. But can you prevent it from happening in the first place? Can you understand the problems with your personnel, your team, your roster in real time and implement changes as opposed to what seems to happen far too often in this very silly league, which is you just keep making the same mistake over and over and over again. You know, when you you talk about Sam Howell and the year that he had, which Ron does in this, you know, it's not just what he talks about in terms of the offseason season. Um, the offseason expectations that Rivera put on Howell, something that he regrets, it's about realizing in the moment, in the middle of the season, that, yeah, you put all this expectation, and you're not doing a damn thing to make his job easier. That, oh, yeah, he's got a lot of talent, but we have to develop it. He's not like he, he's at his maximum potential right now. We can just put a whole offense on his shoulders and drop him back 40 times a game. Realizing that quickly, and actually having a solution to the problem is the job of coaching. Coaching at the end of the day, and this goes for, you know, post-mortem criticism of Rivera that we're doing right now based off him speaking, and also, frankly, more interestingly, in my opinion, um, looking ahead to the future, what do you want in a head coach? You want leadership. You want toughness. Like, you want some things I think are are non-negotiable. But I want you to be an excellent problem solver. Because when you're up here and you're not in the weeds, you should have clarity on the big picture in a way that someone in the weeds doesn't. When you're in the weeds, when you can't see the forest through the trees because you're focused on every leaf, which is like position coach level, and to an extent your coordinator, you are working so hard on making the plan that you have work work that you often don't consider alternative plans. And so a good head coach that acts as quality control that can come in and be like, hey, why are you doing this? Why is this the plan? Why is this how we're proceeding? Can often uncover problems and ensure that you don't get yourself in a bad way in the first place and that you don't spend a bunch of time working on a bad plan. And it seems like nobody asked Eric Bieniemy the question before the season, hey, dude, do you think that putting the entire offense in a drop-back pass-heavy mode with a second-year quarterback with one start under his belt who, by the way, dropped to the fifth round because he has some struggles reading defenses in a drop-back passing game and also has a sack problem and our offensive line's not that great um, especially if they're going to be asked to drop back pass protect all the time. Um, did, you, did you ever think that that's a good idea? Or was he too scared to upset the enemy? Because he's like, hey, I got to empower this guy. You still have to do your job. You still have to go, hey, I, I hear you. I believe in the things you believe in, but we need to be realistic with, about our personnel and our quarterback. And this, this ain't going to work, bro. Like, I, sorry, I, I know you're new here, but, like, I've seen these offensive linemen uh, in the last couple of years. They, that ain't going to work. 
We got to we got to we got to support them more. We got to have a more holistic plan. And it just that level of oversight didn't seem to exist. And so when Rivera starts talking about Howell and the expectations, he says, quote, and this is probably the biggest quote that everyone's pulling from this story, quote, I took a big gamble. I put a lot on Sam and I probably shouldn't have put as much pressure on him. And I think that was probably one of the mistakes I made this year. He didn't deserve to have that put on him. He's a good young quarterback, has some talent and some ability, and I think that's something I should have backed off on. I should have kept emphasizing that he was going to be the guy that got the first opportunity. Just phrasing it that way would have taken a lot of pressure off of him, just kind of that he hadn't been anointed. But here's the the other problem with that. Even going away from like the schematic element once you get into the season, saying that he hadn't been anointed, which, by the way, I also feel like is some revisionist history. Because didn't he really push back during the season or during the offseason last year when people were like, oh, so Sam's your starter? And he was like, no, he's not our starter. He's QB1. Like, he's QB1 for now, but we'll see. The rhetoric is not the problem. And in many ways, I think the other thing that comes out of this article is a complete validation of Ben Standig's reporting that Rivera is a man who is, a not. I don't want to say he's obsessed with, but that can't help himself in chasing narratives versus actual realistic solutions. He doesn't see the things that are hard because he's focused on satisfying a narrative. And now that the season's over and it's like, yeah, the Sam Howell thing didn't work, his response is not, we didn't do the right things for him to support him as a young quarterback that could have succeeded in this league, if that's what he believes. And You know, I still believe that there's an alternate version of the season that goes much better for Sam Howell, um, even if it doesn't remotely end with him being a clear solution for the future. Just didn't have to go as badly as it did, especially towards the end. And nor with the sacks in the beginning. But instead of acknowledging, like, the substance of the problem, it's like, I should have changed the narrative early. The problem wasn't that you said he was anointed. The problem was that he was The problem was you told Jacoby Brissett, hey, dude, you can come in and compete, and you never really gave him a chance to compete. Now, did Sam do anything in the preseason that should that really open the door? No. Did Jacoby was Jacoby so spectacular that you had to to quote unquote have a real competition and give him starters reps the ones? Also, no. But you could have, if, if it's a real competition, then you have to put them on even playing field. Like you did anoint Sam Howell. And I don't disagree with the decision they made. But it's not about the narrative of anointing him. It's the reality that you never actually let Brissett split reps with Sam. Like if that's your concern, if you want to go back and do the hit, do the thing over and say, hey, Ron, what would you change? And your answer is, I would have given Jacoby more reps in the preseason. That's at least more substantive than I would have said stuff differently. But none of it's as good as, yeah, we should have absolutely uh, done a different, had a completely different offensive approach that wouldn't have broken our young quarterback because we got him hit a billion times and gave him basically no realistic chance to succeed behind an offensive line built to run the football. And a lack of cohesion in our play action game and and all the things that we don't need to go back and rehash right now because we've spent so much time doing that of pretty much all season long. Um, So yeah, I, I think that this, this article is in many ways a validation of Ron coming to the realizations that many of us came too long ago and I'm trying not to just come off completely with confirmation bias here but I I think it actually this isn't about like those of us in the media that have been saying those these things being like some brilliant you know clairvoyant people it's it's that the solutions are that freaking obvious like the the problems were that obvious Ron Chase's headlines and narratives not substance and the other thing is he bit off way more than he could chew. Uh, Another quote from the article, I would have loved a different model just because in hindsight, now you really see how much more time you spend on personnel. And as a coach, that's not necessarily what you want to do. What I really enjoyed more than anything else was the last five weeks 
was just being right in the middle of everything. Now your only focus is just that one thing. That's what you do. You want to teach. Like, yeah, Ron was better at being just a coach than a personnel guy, as seen by his personnel decisions. And he did have an impact in the final five weeks of the season on some level making a defense that was horrendous, in part due to his personnel decisions, in part because they had tremendously poor coaching to start, better uh, better being a very relative term, they were 0-5 and, and not particularly great defensively in those games. But again, you couldn't change the personnel, and they had made the sweat in, in young trades, et cetera, et cetera. So, long story short, Rivera is who we thought he is. Um, I think it's interesting that he says he's willing to become a defensive coordinator. I do wonder if like some of the young head coaches are like, you know what, having a guy like without experience around might be actually helpful. I actually think he could be a decent defensive coordinator. Uh, I'd certainly want to get him on a whiteboard and stuff, but um, he, I, I think uh, Ron did not know what he was getting himself into when he got here. And I think it still might take years for him to really understand what he just went through the last four years and uh, all the reasons why it didn't work. It's the Hoffman Show. We're on the Team 980. We're always live as well on the free Odyssey app. And when we get back, my old pal Tim Callishaw. Yeah, that one from ESPN's Around the Horn and longtime columnist of the Dallas Morning News. He joins us. So the Cowboys going to fire Mike McCarthy. And uh, what does he think of Dan Quinn as a head coach candidate there or here? Callishaw next. This is the Hoffman Show on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app.